Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the one-to-one -one series, uh, Digital Dialogues, part of the Superyacht Forum. Today, I'm joined by uh, James Roy from Lateral Engineering Naval Architects down in the south coast of the UK. James, how are you today? Very well, thanks. Yeah, the sun seems to have come out today, so it's feeling like uh, the start of spring. And um, uh, yeah, Good things stuff. are looking Listen, bright and shiny. But first of all, before we start our conversation, I want to wish you a happy thousandth day ha birthday party. Is that, is that today's celebration? Thousand days of lateral. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just coincidence that yeah, today the day we're we're having a chat is uh, our thousandth day uh, since we launched the launched the company. So um, yeah, we're having uh, a, a celebration of, of sorts, celebration with ourselves in our various uh, diversified offices, um, and hopefully when we get together physically later in the year. Yeah. Um, we'll be able to do that do that in person with with the whole team. High, highs of those thousand days. What's the highlights or the the sort of the key uh, things you've done over a thousand days, James? Uh, I suppose uh, the major highlight was getting to the start line of of launching the company because it had kind of been in the planning for for so long, um, and uh, we were so busy with so many projects um, that actually. Uh, Getting it, getting it to the start line and 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 kicked off, um, was was the highlight and was a, a major highlight and uh, yeah, just reflecting on on everything that uh, has gone since and the way the team have uh, have delivered everything and and the work that everyone's put in um, and and everyone that we've collaborated with all the all the partners and customers, um, uh, you know, just everyone we've had contact with. It's been uh, it's been an incredible journey and I think highlights. You know, I suppose what's great about our industry is is the people um, and yeah. the projects, um, and there's a real tapestry of um, very exciting things and exciting thoughts and uh, co colourful characters. Uh, yeah. There's there's very rarely a boring day. <laughs> I think that's that's the case. The case of anyone in yachting, it's never boring. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. the way the way the one to one works, James, is I just want to ask a few very 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 straightforward. But like blue sky type questions, because obviously there's there's lots of things that you do in your organization, which I think are part of our industry's future, um, technology, engineering, uh, propulsion, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I think this is where we should be focusing our attention on. But before we do, I'm going to ask you a very, very simple thing based on a conversation I had with Engel from Lloyd's this morning. We talked about planning. We talked about engineer pre-engineering and all the work that should be done before a project starts. Does enough get done? Uh, I think I think one of the things about, uh, I mean, it's just a, a fact of um, the nature of our projects is that they are very long gestation times. Um, it takes a long time to build a very big yacht. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and whether or not you believe that that can be accelerated uh, or, or not, um, you know, you separate the construction time from what I'd call the inception conception stage. Actually, the amount of time that's spent, um, certainly from a technical side, in technical development of the the blank sheet of paper to you know the the, the core genesis is actually very very short. Yeah. Um, and I would I would challenge that actually, um, you know, is there enough thinking time goes into that? Is there enough is there enough exploration time goes into that period? Often we see decisions being take very big decisions being taken very very quickly. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean I mean ultimately, um, I'm not saying that the wrong decisions are being taken. I just um, I think what it tends to lead to is that we we're building the same old boat over and over again. Don't get me wrong; they're amazing boats. Yeah. Um, and design advances, the creative creativity advances, um, uh, but the pace of technical development is very, very slow because of these very long um, project durations. Um, okay. So, so on that on that topic, in terms of the the, the the engineering and the and the creativity and the actual project development. Um, you talk about decisions being made 
quickly or decisions being made, maybe not invest, enough investigation. Um, I agree with you 100% that perhaps if clients and the teams around the clients would step back a bit and think a bit more laterally or think a bit more carefully, maybe we get different results in some ways, maybe more uh, positive results in some cases. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, like some clients know exactly what they want. Um, and, uh, may, maybe the focus of what they want is more on, on, on the design or the, the lifestyle feature of, of what, what's being delivered. Um, and they're less, less concerned about, um, exploring the whole technical landscape of, of how that might be, uh, of how that might support what they want. But I think, um, yeah, I think part of what drives the short pace of that early work in our industry is also so maybe that actually we've got quite a small pond that everyone's fishing yes. in, um, and um, yeah, there is a, there is a race to to get projects signed up because uh, you know the investment on everyone's part in in making these projects happen is is quite significant, and uh, to have that security of of workload for the for the shipyards particularly, you know, is critical to maintaining that. Uh, you know, if you're only delivering, you know, a couple of boats a year. Um, you need to keep feeding that machine, um, and that maybe mean you you need to actually push these projects quite hard at the beginning to get them. Uh, it, you know, I, I mean, I can speak, you know, as an engineer from an academic perspective. Yeah, we'd like to go on. We'd like to go on for a very long time, please. Thank you very much. Exploring the the art of the possible, um, uh, but it has to be turned into a commercial reality. And as I say, because it's a small pond and there's quite a lot of players fishing in it, um, there there is a, a need to, to kind of uh, get the boats to contract, get the projects to contract and, and underway. Um, yeah. so and, from and that's a, just a natural factor of, of something we, a challenge we face, I guess. Yeah. So James, from a personal perspective, if, if you look at the industry as a whole and, and your experience so far, what are the things you'd like to still change or you think need to change in our marketplace? Uh, well, I think if you if you if you take the idea of it's a small pond, you know, I, I suppose that there are some days, you know, when I've 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 thought, well, how many, you know, when you reflect on how long the modern super yacht industry has been going and how many yachts are being built, and you know, every year there's another handful of hundred meter plus yachts delivered, uh, and you think, well, you know, how many hundred meter plus yachts does the world need? how many how many you know, how much longer can this go on for uh, but as you know yourself from the your own market research that you you publish and, and talk about you know the number of people who the accessible market the number of people who could afford such a vote is is quite large compared to how many clients we actually have yes so um the pond is quite small but actually it's got the potential to be quite big Yes. Uh, and if we could make it bigger, then perhaps there's less pressure to to race these projects to contract. Um, uh, so I just wonder if in super yachting we're making even the idea of I, I, I'm, I don't want to use the word own because maybe in the future ownership won't be won't be the primary means of, of being a stakeholder in a super yacht. Um, but are we making super yachting a compelling place to come and spend one's one's capital um yes. you know i think at the moment we our industry has quite an old-fashioned approach you know we try and I mean, how, how do you get anyone to want to want your product as you try and create desire um you try to create desire within them um uh, for your product your brand um uh, but we we tend to do that at the moment based on quite a lot based on you know, marketing of lifestyle um and actually future stakeholders aren't maybe necessarily wooed by flashy lifestyle yeah. they want more authentic reasons um yes. and maybe maybe they need reasons to rationalize in their own head why they're going to go and spend that amount of money um and i think you know the current situation we're in with a pandemic the gap between rich and poor is only going to get worse and um 
you know, super yachts, uh, I think, have a bad name and an image already to a degree in the public domain. Um, but they're only going to be held up more alongside other luxury assets like jets and big houses, etc., as a sort of ultimate tangible evidence of the gap between rich and poor. Yes. Uh, whereas actually, super yachts have many reasons why they're a force for good. Yes. Uh, redistribution of wealth, um, in technical innovation, driving technology, uniting art and science together. Um, there's 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 lots of there's lots of clever things we could do as an industry to make the pond bigger, yeah. and uh, and and maybe enhance our appeal to to society. Yeah, I, th I think <clears throat> James, it's a very interesting topic. And when we talked about uh, last year with the Repack and Mar Marnix and Bart about this, actually, when you look at the actual assets we're building, on the surface, there's a lot of plagiarism and design, there's a lot of similarities, and maybe to some potential clients, they're a bit boring and not as exciting as they could be. And I think that's where I think your, uh, say, organization's future is, is making things really cool and exciting through innovation technology. And we don't really sell that very well to the market. There's a lot of, as you say, lifestyle visuals or the predictable sunbathing experience in a jacuzzi and to me we need to dial it up a bit you agree yeah i think uh yeah don't 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 i, I don't mean to you know i don't want to um criticize anyone's work um because uh, you know the the, the the if you look at the way designers advanced over the last 10 years in in cpots and uh, you know it's amazing it really is yeah um but you know the essence of of what we're delivering is is 99% the same. Um, yes, we deliver more. We deliver a better user experience, um, uh, perhaps within a, a, a more efficient package in terms of use of space and clever use of space uh, and the aesthetic. Um, uh, but it's essentially the same, the same machine. Um, yeah. Sometimes, after you know yourself when you go on. Around, around the boats, um, some of them feel like you, you've kind of stepped out of a floating artisan showcase. Um, and, and I, as amazing as that artisan work is, I sometimes get off the boats and think, is that a bit of a folly? <coughs> you know, what what purpose does that serve? Yeah. Um, uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with a folly. <laughs> um, uh, you know. In today's world, yeah, there's very few follies being made. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and I think if you look at the billionaire culture today, it's about actually driving change or develop investing in innovation or investing in positivity. So, and I think that's something we don't necessarily present well at the moment because that's we're still building, we're still building, building very big boats with very big diesel engines. Yeah, I I agree. I think we're not. You know, we're 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 not making. Um, you know, I I often it often comes back to risk, and I say well, we don't take enough risk in the industry. Um, uh, but actually, what we're it, it's it's slightly more subtle than that. You know, clients come to us and they want us to innovate, and and everyone in the industry innovates every day. We we see that in the in 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 the amazing boats that are delivered, but actually, innovating. And being an innovator, I think, are quite different. We want the clients to come and be innovators. Yes. And being an innovator means taking risk. Um, so how do we make it palatable, exciting, compelling for a client to take a risk? Uh, and I don't mean a risk in doing a slightly more edgy aesthetic. I mean a risk in advancing science, engineering, creativity, you know, we don't have to separate it as design and engineering. It's all one thing. Yeah. Um, you know, that we, you know, that there are very, very few projects, if any, really, which actually challenge the very essence of what a yacht is. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, that sounds quite fluffy, uh, but um, yeah, we we we, uh, we we seem to be doing the same the same boat, but on a progressively larger and larger and grander scale. Yeah. 
No, I, th- I think I think it's an interesting topic because obviously when you look at what's happened with the America's Cup campaigns and the investment and the excitement behind that sort of innovation or Formula One or the space travel with Orig- Blue Origin and, and um, Tesla and their, their sort of Elon Musk project, it's like, is there something missing in the world of innovation, engineering and pushing our own envelope to say, actually, there's a lot of people, 300,000 people out there can buy a yacht tomorrow. But we only, we only deal in a pool or a pond, as you say, of a couple of hundred people a year. Mm-hmm. And they're buying the same thing, apart from one or two who are currently talking about new exciting projects or one or two exciting projects. How do we, in your lateral world, present what could be done better? What could be done? Well, that's quite a question. <laughs> Maybe if I had the answer to that, I, right now I'd be on a beach in the Caribbean. Or Well, actually, I wouldn't because I'm not allowed to travel. Um, <laughs> I'd probably be downstairs in my living room. Um, yeah, look, we, we've got to, as I say, we've got to, we've, we've got to find a way to turn, uh, you know, it, 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 ultimately, you know, that the, the theory of innovation is is a well is a well proven uh theory you know that the the one percent you know of a, of a or one or two percent i forget what the exact numbers diffusion of innovation model um are people who want who want to innovate and and accept that innovating means taking risk so it's just a numbers game if we've only got 100 clients um you know we're going to get one innovator you know if we if we treble the size of our client base we treble the number of innovators um uh and uh so yeah we, we've got to we've got to work to make the pool bigger to make it more compelling to to have a super yacht uh and then we've got to we've got to find and nurture those innovators mm. um, and the ones who are maybe in the middle between the early adopters and the innovators we've got to make it really p- compelling for them as well um to take a risk uh, and take a risk doesn't mean betting everything on red or everything on black. Um, you know, it doesn't mean success versus failure. It's not binary. Um, uh, but we've got to we've got to show them the art of what's of what's possible. Uh, and, and when I say possible, I don't mean more lifestyle, uh, more functionality. Uh, I mean, it sounds very grand to say it, but advancing humanity. Yeah. yeah, we're all we're all trying to advance towards a carbon-free future. Well, we can within our industry, we can play our part in that, yes. uh, and and we can, you know, some of our clients want to leave a legacy to humanity yeah. through their their wealth. Uh, well, it sounds quite perverse to say it, but they they could do that through building a super yacht. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but we don't make it compelling. We don't. Mm. We don't make. We don't make it. Um, uh, at the at the moment, I think the industry is very reactive. You know, if there, there are one or two of those clients around, and the industry responds, uh, but uh, I don't think we're doing enough to try and pique their interest in the in the first place. Um, yeah. No, it's, it's an interesting subject, and I, and I think it's a critical subject for the future because you mentioned about ownership and capital outlay for ownership becoming almost incongruous with the actual value you're getting out of a yacht today. Yes, we are still selling boats and the market's still relatively active and buoyant, but actually maybe looking at what you've been presenting to market in terms of next generation thinking on the next project with uh, Ocean Co and other cool ideas you've presented to the world, um, there are people that may just want to invest in that as 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 you say game changing new thinking in terms of saying okay i might not buy one but i'd love to make sure it becomes the future of our marketplace because to me i do i do sort of question this constant uh appetite for diesel engines and very conventional power plants whereas your team seem to advocate that needs to move forward to a whole new level can we get there, do you think, James? Or are there too many barriers to, to change? Uh, we, we, we will get there, but I think we shouldn't. Um, 
you know the the route to getting there i think is quite is quite long and there there are some fairly major curveballs along the way like this pandemic um yes we will come out of this pandemic there will still be a focus on sustainability etc but everyone will be trying to get to get back to where where they were before the whole thing started yeah. um uh so so there are setbacks and well you know in some ways you know the setbacks present as many opportunities as they do as they do um barriers um so we, we shouldn't forget that as well um but i think you know diesel engines will be around for quite a long time to come uh and ultimately yeah there may be a sort of uh an, an ultimate vision of of the future which whether you believe that's uh ammonia methanol hydrogen whatever whatever mix of of alternative fuels or synthetic fuels or whatever you believe that to be that that's an uncertain future we can't we can't we can't you know i think i think to nail our colors hard to any one solution and start engineering it today we're, we're at risk of building an obsolescence now yes. um but there are some certainties between now and that future whatever one deems it is that we we know we can we can say with with certainty and you know for example you know electrification is a key is going to be a key part of the architecture to harness those fuels in the future um uh the uh the use of you know battery technology is going to advance yeah you know, we, we we know that so yeah. to engineer in a, 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 a yacht with electrical architecture now with a fairly um, core part of battery technology, you can say with certainty, well, that boat is not going to go backwards in terms of obsolescence. It's going to it's going to get better in future years as battery technology advances or has the yes. potential to. Yes. Um, uh, we know that all future fuels are less energy dense than uh, the fossil fuels we use at the moment. So we know that in the future, you know, we are going to need more space on board for technical uh kit yes um the only way we can combat that is to continue to make things more efficient to use less energy yeah. even if the energy is free we still want to use less of it yes so yeah. we have we have to continue with a drive for efficiency in all areas of energy use and energy management um so i think there are you know whilst the future is uh both in time scale and ultimate direction is still a bit uncertain um there are you know, when we when we start to strategize future proofing, for example, there are things we can say now that that let us take the right decisions today, um, uh, and make sure we're not going down paths that that ultimately lead to obsolescence. And I don't think that we I don't think we should be thinking yet that putting diesel engines in a boat is making them is going to make them obsolete. Uh, I, I just don't I don't think we're anywhere near that sort of time scale yet. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, there, there, there will be some innovators who say, well, I want to put a, you know, um, banana skin powered engine in my boat. And, and that's great. We should we should nurture those people because every incremental step we take uh, in terms of exploring new technology is is very valuable. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you touched on a subject there, which I think linked to this title, Join the Dots. Purely because I think what happens is that everything we put on a boat seems to consume more and more energy. And we don't necessarily reduce that requirement. All these different systems and, and I say entertainment systems and uh, air conditioning, but you and I know full well that it's so unnecessary in so many cases, the volume of energy required. Yeah. What stops us reducing and reduce engineering or reverse engineering that? Because to me, that's an easy win to improve mm. our almost our image, but also the the, the next gen of projects. Because there's so much energy being produced. And yeah. a lot of I think when you dial it right back, Martin, it comes back to what is a super yacht and people's perception of what a super yacht is. And I don't mean to look at; I just mean every facet of its specification. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all the all all the stake potential stakeholders involved at the start of a project, uh, you know, the designer, the broker, the captain, chief engineer, 
the naval architects, the shipyard, um, layers and layers of engineers across multiple uh, suppliers. Everyone has their, well, it has to do this because if it doesn't do this, it's not really a super yacht. This is what super yachts do. Uh, and you add up all of that functionality and all of that requirement. And yes, you have this amazing can do anything anywhere in the world at any time machine. Uh, but it's it's not fit for purpose. It's totally beyond fit for purpose. And therefore, like you say, it's consuming way more energy than is needed. Yeah. Um, it's a bit like, you know, my car outside on the drive. I can get in the car and I can do 450 miles on a tank of gas. Um, but actually, statistically, when I look at my mileage, uh, you know, I probably only need to do about day to day about five, 10 miles. Yeah. Um, yes, there might be the occasional time I need to do a long range drive. Uh, but I have this perception of what I think a car needs to do. Yeah. But it doesn't. Um, and I think it all starts with challenging that perception of what is a super yacht? What should it need to do? Um, uh, and, and I think that's quite a difficult mindset to move on from as an yeah, industry. Yeah. I think it's, it's an interesting project or problem to uh, to analyze even further as, as a, a, almost a, a team of people discussing. I remember when, when yeah. Bill Joy built Ethereal and Errol Houseman, he did that charrette meeting with all the different yeah. engineers stakeholders and said, how can we reduce and reduce and reduce? That probably doesn't happen enough. No, I don't think it does. And I think also we have, you know, uh, we have the potential to access a vast amount of data about how boats are actually used. Yeah. And I don't just mean where they go geographically and at what speed. Yeah. You know, how often the, the doors open or how often the, you know, every, everything, you know, we, yeah. we live in a data driven world um, and, uh, you know, understanding having real intimate insight and understanding of how it's used uh is ultimately at the root of making it ever more efficient yes um, no, no, you're right that, that whole thing of plugging into shore power or running main gens in in the marinas when there's no one on board so apart from skeleton crew all these things yeah. so easily optimized yeah as you said we take stock and rethink a few things both yeah. naturally and by joining these dots and say, okay, how is the boat being used? I like that because I think when guests are on board or when just crew are on board, there's different operational modes that we talk about that there are different loads and different use modes, but we don't take it far enough, I don't think. No. Hmm. Well, no. Jack, just changing tack a little bit. Um, we talk about efficiency and sustainability and, and the, 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 let's say, the future of the market. What are your views on sailboats? and their future uh well you know I, i'm I, i'm a i'm a sailor at heart uh you know I, I i studied yacht design in southampton with the with the full intention of having won the america's cup by now uh and i find i find myself designing uh mainly large motor yachts which um i don't i don't lament that at all i mean it's been a been a great journey and um very very challenging and rewarding um but yeah so I'm, I'm a sailboat fan and i you know recently i've started to question the way we talk about sailboats and motorboats um uh, and the whole kind of people arriving clients arriving saying well you know show me some alternative fuel solutions etc and and actually we, we've got one that's been around for a long time. Uh, um, it, it involves the wind, uh, and, it, and it's free. And um, uh, but what you know, the way the way that that sort of then plays out is well, I'm not I'm not really a sailboat person, and um, well, what does being a sailboat person mean? You know, ultimately, if you just take the emotional and the personal aspects out of it, um, you know, someone's coming with a set of functional requirements. I want a family yacht for you know 12 people or you know and it's got to be able to do these things um uh uh and, and if if you want it with a if you really want to be 
environmentally you know, if, if environmental agenda is at the heart of of what you're trying to uh, of your brief then we don't have to to open the top drawer and pull out this sticker that says sailboat guy put it on you and sell your sailboat um you know so we, we have these ingrained paradigms sailboat guy motorboat guy and then we have narratives about what those people like um and how they might think um well how about the next time we have someone come into the industry who an owner who perhaps he's new to he's new to boating he's never he's never sailed he's never been on a motorboat but he's got a functional brief and a, an environmental focus why don't we try and don't try and sell him a motorboat don't try and sell him a sailboat you know here's an opportunity to recreate what a a yacht is um there's some you know i mean ultimately am i talking about a motor sailor maybe um, yeah. but there's some kind of we, we need to kind of step away a bit i think from uh the sailboat guy and the motorboat guy and and our our sort of um narratives about how they might behave or think or i mean don't get me the wrong those those are still important because those people will still exist right yeah. um uh but uh, i think there's there's untapped potential in in sale for sure yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when you see that now in the in the commercial marine market with you know a resurgence of people looking at, at putting um sail assist on on commercial vessels um uh, so yeah no, it's, it's, it's an interesting subject i think is is sometimes misunderstood uh yeah. and pigeonholed into high tech high performance high cost yes as yeah, and, and, and going around everywhere at 15 degrees of heel, which is is not <laughs> not, not necessary. No, not necessary. no. So, James, before we close, what's your predictions or expectations for the future? Uh, well, I, I've come to, you know, uh, you may have seen in some of the stuff we have put out recently, sort of changed our view on what the future is, really, and how we talk about it. I remember growing up uh, with a program called Tomorrow's World, uh, which was on the BBC, which would uh, would tell tell you all sorts of gadgets and things that might happen in the future, and and some of them have happened. I suppose you know just us talking on this screen together and uh, over the over the airwaves um, has come true. Uh, but other things that were said about the future, you know, well, I haven't been to the moon yet, and we're we're not going to Mars anytime soon. Um, so, uh, and I suppose. I'm conscious when I reflect on that, that I always thought about the future as somewhere we might get to, but actually as we take, as we take every day forwards, the, the future moves an equal number of days further away from us. Yeah. So, you know, we're never going to get there. So we just need to forget about talking about the future as some sort of distant event. You know, the only day that really matters is today and tomorrow, you know, cause what we're doing today right now and tomorrow is the future uh so we need to we need to focus on i think um you know as i say growing the size of our of our pool yeah uh and therefore in doing so uh you know increase the number of innovators uh nurture cherish those innovators get them to start really amazing projects that push the boundaries uh and you know what the technical solutions are will will fall out of that exercise um uh, the more we do of that, uh, you know, the faster things will 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 progress. And um, let's say you know, it sounds very grand to say, but we will play our part in driving humanity forwards. Mm. Powerful statement, huh? Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's a great way to motivate teams as well. You know, it's easy to come to think, oh, I'm coming to work today to draw a bracket or do some calculations or you know strategize whatever as part and parcel of uh, of doing one's job but actually you know one at one level i think well our job is delivering happiness you know we're delivering happiness to someone who buys a boat yeah but aside from that i also really believe that we are here to push the envelope and and take the world forwards yeah. um tomorrow's world great program yeah. great program yeah. Yeah. James, thank you very much for your time. Really enjoyed it. Okay. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the new forest soon. Yes, indeed.
Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.